if you say what you right. want to say. I hope we're all full and we've met a new friend at lunchtime and now we're back for the afternoon stretch. Um, lots of pace going on this afternoon, lots of short skits going on. Um, Programmatic is a topic on everybody's mind right now. Obviously, mach machine to machine decision making has become absolutely a fact of life in our industry. Um, there's a lot of confusion around it, I think it's fair to say, about what it is and what it isn't. The 4As and the 614 group have recently launched a major study to explore that confusion around the value of this technology and the approach has for our industry. So I think we're, we're going to have a really interesting conversation with the crew here today. So without any delay, I'd like to welcome my good friend Lewis back up to the stage to talk about uh, introducing the panel and programmatic. Good afternoon. So um, we're going to wake you up after that nice lunch. Um, I have on stage with me Mr. Sean Riegsicker. Um, from Centro and Mr. Rob Rasco. Um, and we're here to begin to sort of uncover some of the stuff that we've been working on the last several months. So um, <clears throat> sort of a, a attendant to the whole brand safety issue has been this issue around programmatic in the dirty digital supply chain. Um, and uh, you know, I sat down and I sort of thought about this situation and sort of um, the bad rap that programmatic um, ha uh, has been getting um, and really wanted to explore um, whether there is actually a different narrative out there for us to talk about. Um, because from, and w when I sat down with Rob at 614, um, I, I, I briefed him uh, sort of like this. I said, you know, as far as I remember, in 2009, the re we had the recession. Um, we were marching back to the upfronts, paying more and more dollars for less and less GRPs. People were frustrated. Uh, digital was actually starting to ramp uh, in significant ways. We were beginning to see video, but there wasn't enough to feed the appetite. And so programmatic became this way to begin to do video digitally at scale in a video neutral kind of context. Um, I said, that's, that's the way I see it. Rob, prove or disprove my theory. Um, and with that, we set out to do uh, some research. So um, <clears throat> Rob uh, is here to uh, give us the top line. Um, of that research, but one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we did was thoughtful um, and truly credible research. Uh, so we are planning a qualitative phase, which you'll see the top line of today, and a quantitative phase that will happen over the next several months. Um, N, goal for N is N equals 300, um, so that, and we have a good cross-section of the marketplace. To do that kind of research, um, for you who've done research before, knows that it costs a little money to do that kind of research. And so um, we set out to um, talk to people in the marketplace about whether they had interest in helping us underwrite this effort. Um, and so Centro stepped right into the center. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry for the pun, dude. Um, <laughs> stepped right into the center of, of, of the stage um, and has come on as a platinum sponsor to help us get this research done. And so with that, uh, I give you a few words from Sean. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Lewis. So um, when we heard about the study, both qualitative and quantitative, we were excited and we were proud to underwrite it because when, and I've been in the industry uh, since the mid-90s, and as we look at where we've gotten to and where we're going, I feel that the discussion on automation is probably the number one conversation we need to be having as an industry that, frankly, we're not having enough of. I think we all agree that we have the same goal. We want a healthy, we want a vibrant, we want a prosperous industry, which means that we need healthy, vibrant, and prosperous ad agencies. <clears throat> but as that's the stated goal, we see two trend lines that continue to emerge. The first <clears throat> is complexity for our industry continues to increase, not decrease. And under the words complexity, there's two different things. The first is we have a lot more platform complexity than we've ever had before. The average media planner buyer today 
works over from seven to 10 different platforms just to do their job. And then we have media choice. And as we talk about the advent of, of you know, mobile and video where we're at today, as we look forward, we've got digital television. We've got digital out of home. We've got AR, we've got VR. We've got internet of things. We've got audio search. We've got haptic technology connected to wearable devices. So it doesn't look to us as though the media choices and places and things are going to decrease going forward. <clears throat> and so historically, as an industry, we've talked about programmatic as a panacea relative to helping create greater efficiency, labor productivity in our industry. Unfortunately, at this point, I don't think that the promise of programmatic and automation have yet come together. And too often we try to conflate the words programmatic and automation. And so when these you know, guys and, and Lewis and, and Rob said we want to do a study on automation and what it's going to mean, we got very excited about you know, being an unbiased underwriter of the report and the research. Because as we look forward, the second trend line is that brands and marketers are wanting to pay their agencies less. So when you have in complexity increasing and the willingness to pay their agencies less, we're creating an unhealthy, a lack of prosper, and also, um, frankly, an unsustainable industry going forward. The only way we're going to get out of this is somehow through technology, somehow through automation, and we think that all of the interviews as well as the quali or quantitative research is going to help us pinpoint some areas that the 4As can lead as an industry in helping us get to a better spot. So with that, I'll turn it over to Rob and you can give a little preview of uh, where we're at. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so hi, everyone. I hope lunch was OK. Everybody had their coffee. Uh, as these guys said, uh, my name is Rob Rasco, and I'm the CEO of the 614 Group. Um, I build, if those of you don't know me, uh, I have a long history of working on projects like this. I, I, I build consensus. And, and you know, if, if, God forbid, tomorrow I passed away, it would say on my tombstone somewhere, hey, here lies Rob, he builds consensus. Uh, it's kind of what I do. And, and kind of getting involved in this kind of project is perfect. What's also kind of cool about this one is this conversation has been going on for a really long time. And, and even here at the forays for the last couple of days, I kind of feel like we've been talking about this. We had dinner last night. I've been talking about it all day. So right now what I'm doing is I'm letting you all in on the joke, which is essentially where we are, what we've been talking about so far. And this is a top line preview. What, what does that mean, top line preview, just to kind of get a sense of it? We're about 30% of the way done right now. So, which means we need you to be more involved, to continue to be involved with us to make this right. We don't have the right answer today. We're just, a, we're just giving you some headlines and highlights. Um, our, our research was underwritten by a series of companies, and so you heard from Sean, but just to kind of get a sense of who they were, we're grateful to them because we couldn't have done it without them as our underwriters, uh, basis by Centro, uh, our gold partners, NCC, Media Math, IBM Watson, and Zaxis, and our silver partner, Seismic. So thank you to our partners. This would not have been possible without you, uh, of course. And thank you to the four A's. Uh, and thank you to Cheryl Main, uh, who has been really critical in making this research happen. Most of you know Cheryl. Uh, she'll be leading a breakout that we do this afternoon at 4 o'clock, where we dig deeper into some of the things I'm going to talk about today. If, if you were at our dinner last night, you know there was fireworks. Uh, people were really excited. They're really engaged in this conversation. And that's, that's really cool for us to be a part of. Um, so just a little bit of, of, of a preview of the process of how we're getting here. Um, stage one, uh, we're doing a deep dive series of interviews. There's going to be about 60 of them. Uh, what is the news? Well, the news here is it's not just agencies we're interviewing. We're talking to publishers. We're talking to marketers. We're talking to agencies. We're talking to ad technology companies. This is a 360 view. We're getting everybody involved. You can't get this right without getting everybody's point of view. As, as we mentioned, there's going to be a survey. 300 is the minimum number of respondents. I, my guess is we can get many, many more once we go live with the survey. And we're going to be asking questions that come out of the qual to help build it. Then we're going to have a final strategic report in around June, where we'll see the results in full. And you'll have an understanding of what people see as programmatic and the future of its automation, although we're still having a discussion around that title uh, as this thing comes together. So, just to kind of take a level deeper, uh, the first question we asked everybody, 
right? Where do we want to get started, right? If you want to kind of think about this, you have to ask a first question. Well, what is the first question? Well, it's very simple. How do you define programmatic? How do you define the word automation? Interesting, as we start to kind of think about this, right? The two words have different meanings to different people. So here's a couple of the headlines, right? Programmatic is not automation, but I really like it to be. I'm not going to read all of these. There's a bunch of them. But, but just to kind of sense of things that we're hearing. Um, programmatic is not a tactic. It's, it's a simply a way to transact media from a publisher. Uh, highly analytical, not very automated. Programmatic is around bi-directional data flow. But it's, it's associated, but automation is associated with algorithmic machine learning and specialized form of rules and intelligence. Um, and so then we also think about being the ability to execute buys at a faster pace. So then you start thinking about, you start to see some differences in these definitions when you talk to people. So then we got to this working thesis, right? Lewis said, Lewis, Lewis teased this a little bit earlier. And, and the good news about this, um, the good news about this thesis is it's already striking controversy. Like people read what's on this slide, people hear us say these words, and they say, no way. No way. It's not just about efficiency. It's not just about scale. It's about both of those things. It's, you know, it's, it wasn't just about unsold inventory. It wasn't, you know, and so in, we're already sparking controversy, right? That's what we want, right? Because we're not there yet. We're in the process. So here's, a, but here's a working thesis. Here's our next working thesis. If programmatic started as an efficiency play, it's all about data now. Data, data, data. Programmatic has led to a driver of data-driven growth. How do we know that? How did we come up with that finding? Well, we took all the interviews. Um, like I said, we're going to do 60. We've got about 40 of them done. We took the transcripts of a bunch of them. We threw them into a word cloud machine. And guess what happened? Just This is just, these are actual people's Respondents, we just we just simply put all the words into a machine. Um, and by the way, if you're in the audience today and you've been part of the interviews, we're super grateful to you. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you if you're out here. Um, we, people are giving us an hour plus of their time. They're really truly engaged. We have hours and hours of conversations and quotes to get through, uh, but really rich stuff that we're getting already. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But again, data right in the center of this conversation. That is what people are talking about, data. Um, and that, but that leads to a question, right? It leads to a question. What is the value of getting the data opportunity correct? So, we, so you start to see these, some of these kinds of things coming from, from marketers. Well, if you're not going to be a first party data company, you have to be. Otherwise, you're not going to be a successful marketer. We hear things like the higher level of data, the higher quality of the data, the more likely the result will be higher level performance. So people are seeing, people are saying data is important, here's why. Um, it's, not, it's not just important to understand the kind of person. We also want optimized to reach the goals. The thing that the data set is probably being modeled to heck, right? And that's the other thing, you know, when you start thinking about the people and the effort required to do this. Um, uh, lastly, if we get data correct, we're going to see better results, right? So, and again, this shouldn't be a surprise to you, we're, you know, because again, this is what we're hearing from everybody. Um, but, but just to kind of move ahead here, the questions that start to come together, right, is what is going to be the right model going forward, right? If we all agree the future is about the automation of media and data, we still need to figure out a right model of how we're going to work together. There's a lot of questions when it comes to that. People, people being at the center of it, technology being at the center of it, and where are those different pieces? Sean mentioned it earlier. Here's a couple of the quotes that we've heard as well. Again, drive a, little, drive a little thought here, right? From, from an agency leader, why a marketer's job is so difficult. So difficult, so many data points. Agencies need to be strategic consultants to their clients. We've heard from publishers. Programmatic creates some level of efficiency. But some staff functions get replaced with other staff functions, leading to different people required to execute programmatic. These are questions that we need to kind of get to the bottom of if we're going to figure out how the future pieces fit together. Uh, here's an interesting one. 
Just soak that in for a second. Get out of the way. If it has the word technology in the title, I need to get my IT department to approve the hire. You can imagine where that came from, right? It sounds, things, certain things sound good, and then you have to dig into them. And that's what we're trying to help figure out. Uh, and lastly, um, a, bunch of, a bunch of people, a bunch of them did it in-house. Now they push it back to the agency so you can run it now and have it cost. And, and so, so there's also a cost conversation in here, right? Is, is how much should it cost to do certain functions? And how does that play in? And that's something else we'll be driving into. Uh, this, this slide, you know, uh, lovingly we're calling this the Ten Commandments or the Ten Plagues or however you want to refer to it, but they are themes that are coming up over and over again that need resolution if we are going to get to uh, a consensus. Uh, I said earlier, I'm going to help build consensus. That's what I do. These are some of the things. I'm not going to read them all, but, but what's, you know, they're all here. Mutual trust right? Uh, transparency, uh, costs of technology. These are all things and conversations that are coming up. We need solutions to get them. Here's a, here's a little, little cartoon kind of uh, explaining what's going on in the world. You know, this is, uh, right? I think we've all, kind of, we've all kind of lived this. You know, we add more tech, we add more work, we add more, uh, more, more needs and requirements. So, how, so what's the call to action? What, 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 do I, what am I asking you for today? Well, there's a breakout, 4 o'clock. If it's anything like last night's dinner, we're going to have a really good time. No shortages of opinions, a lot of cross-conversation, but everybody really engaged in trying to make this a better conversation. So that's what I want, 4 o'clock. Come join us. If you, if you liked what we had to say, if I like what I had to say, if you don't like it, that's even better. Come and tell us why. We want to see you at 4 o'clock. There's going to be a survey that we're going to be releasing in the spring. Please fill it out. Also, share it. Have your colleagues in the industry fill it out. The more respondents we get, the better the data is going to be, the better we'll be able to put position out there. We're driving to a playbook. And by the way, you know, the four A's, this, this place, this conversation is the right place to have it, right? The agencies sit in the center between marketers and publishers and technology companies. This is the right place to be having this conversation. And so the better we could do to be participants in it, the more meaningful it's going to be. Here's how to find us. Uh, the breakout's at 350. There's an email address uh, if you want to uh, participate in the, in the research directly. Uh, that link is live now. Uh, the survey is not live yet, but the link is live yet. So if you want to be part of the survey, you can submit because we're going to be doing regional events as well. Uh, that's my Twitter handle if you want to get in touch with me directly. And uh, thank you very much. Thank it's you. A pleasure. <clears throat>